Bang, news and eyes. I'm Jared, my lovely wife Kara is at work and you can see me right there. And in this video we are going to go over a few heavy hitters. Mostly actually from the US. This is the only one that's not from the USA. This is actually a Japanese knife. The Rockstead Higo. And we are going to put them head to head and see which one comes out on top. Now I ask that you don't fast forward to the end because a lot of it probably wouldn't make sense at the end if you just skip to the end so let's get into it so this is the rockstead higo um i do have a full review on all these knives so if you're you know questioning you know some things i don't put in this video you can go check it out there but this is a very very well made expensive knife from japan um most of these knives were gifted to me. I just want to say that. Thank you, Mr. Amazing. But this knife does have amazing, amazing fit and finish. The work done on it is on a very high level. And it just continues to get smoother and smoother over time. There's a lot of benefits. Or, I don't know about benefits. There's a lot of things that make this knife to the price that it is because it is very very expensive so the next one on the list is going to be the spartan harsey this one happens to be with the mayan calendar also a knife that is getting extremely smooth over time very heavy duty knife um, full titanium, just a really heavy, heavy duty knife. Next up, we have the Microtech SOCOM Elite. Very, very nice aluminum handles. T American Tonto blade. This one happens to be an M3, or 204P, sorry. 204P. Great action, thumb stud deployment is really nice on this. Now, some of these knives also, like these two, have a smaller version. And we will show those right now. We have this one right here. This is the Mini Spartan Harsey. So if the big one isn't your style, maybe the smaller one is. And then the Microtech has the little Mini Microtech, but they do not make this anymore. This uh, was discontinued a while ago. This one happens to be over 20, 21 years old at this point. Next up, <clears throat> another knife that has a mini, the Hinder XM18. This is the 3.5 inch, but there also is the, the three inch. So this is a great knife, a beefy knife. This one's in full titanium, but there's a lot of different ways you can have this. You have three ways of deployment, which I do like. And this one just happens to have really, really good action. Next up, we have the Chris Reeves Umnanzun, which is another heavy-duty knife. It's just built, the build quality on it is very impressive. It's a very solid knife like the the last two the, the the microtech and the hinder the thumb studs are the stop pin then we have the chris reeve sabenza 21 great knife another solid solid knife all these knives on this list are very very solid now this one has a smaller one too I just don't happen to have it here. So, plus we're not really talking about the smaller ones in this, but I just figured I'd show it since we have it right here. Now, we also have a larger version of the Hinder, the XM24, which is a, a big knife. It's a beefy knife. It's definitely bigger than the 3.5. It comes in with a 4-inch blade, which also makes the handle bigger. It is definitely a solid, solid knife. This one happens to have carbon fiber on one side. Now, let's start going down the list of 
which one's the better version? What's the best knife out of these knives? Let's put them all out here. What would be the best knife out of all of these? And I'm going to come at this from a user aspect. Now, right off the bat, I have to kick one out. And it's going to be for two reasons. Now, I hate to bring price into it, but most of these knives are somewhat affordable, except for one. This is not at all affordable. Now, another thing, it does not have a clip. Yes, you have this, and you can carry this on your belt, which I might even do right now. This actually does carry really good. It's actually really nice. And then it leaves your pocket open for maybe a more harder use knife when you're not going to worry about getting dirty or beating on a little bit harder. Or maybe if you just want to leave your pockets empty because you like to put your hands in your pockets or you know carry other stuff in your pocket, it leaves it open. So it actually is pretty cool having it on your hip like that, keeping your knife, you know, off from there so pretty cool but it just it doesn't have a clip for you to just throw it right in your pocket for and I'm talking about from like an, a user aspect the next thing this has a very very much mirror finish that will get scratched up yes you can send it back to Japan to have them polish it but that's just more money that it's going to cost you to keep this thing and to take care of this thing and to keep up with this thing and then to sharpen it. I mean, you could just go right to town and start sharpening it. And if you bought it for a user, maybe you won't care. So, I mean, I guess this could be your top one. And if you want to, let me know down in the bottom which one you would pick. But I would have to say no to this one for a user aspect because of those reasons. It's scary to sharpen, uh, does not have a clip, and the price is very high. Next up. So, this next one I'm going to kick out for pure mass, even though I love it so much. Now, I would possibly pick this under many, many conditions. Like, if the... the if what the choices or what we we're basing this around wasn't from a user aspect. I, I would keep this. I would, you know, something else would probably get kicked out. But this thing is a little thick behind the edge. And unless if I am chopping wood or if I'm out camping or it depends on your use, right? My use is different than somebody else's. So this might possibly be, and I, I like using this. I don't have no problem using it. I have used it. I'm actually getting close to needing to sharpen it because I've used it. Uh, but it still does have the factory edge on it uh, because I tend to grab a different knife that passes through materials just a little bit easier. Now, the Ergos are undeniable. This thing has possibly the best Ergos off of this list. I mean, it's just fantastic. And it fills the hand really nice. So when it comes to leverage, you really got that here. And that's what makes it, I feel like, pass through materials a little bit easier is that leverage. But that pure size and mass, I mean, it's just, it's a big knife. Now, next, which you could argue is almost the same size. I mean, let's just see here. Yeah, this is very close to the same size, but when it comes to just the feel of it, this is lighter. It's uh, it's a little smaller in the hand, but still is very, very comfortable in the hand. Um, I to to say which one's more comfortable, I almost want to say the Spartan. Um, it, it's kind of hard to choose. This is very, very comfortable in my hand, and um, I don't know if I'm gonna pick that one yet though. Um. The SOCOM, oh man, this is where it starts getting difficult, it starts getting difficult, so I do like this knife a lot, I like, <laughs> let me just say, all the knives that we've shown so far, I heavily, heavily love, I, I love absolutely a lot, this, uh, 
This one has aluminum handles. These ones have titanium, aluminum scratches, just a little bit easier. And if it's just a pure user, I'm not really going to care about scratches so much. Um, you know what? I'm going to kick this one out because it's a Tonto. I'm looking for reasons to kick these things out. You see that? Um, but because um, even though this is a very useful blade shape, and I do even find it very useful like in construction and a lot of different uses, it's it's not as useful to me as a drop point. Okay, next up. Let's open these guys up now. So, the next one I'm going to kick out for sharpenability. Um, because at some point, a user knife is going to have to be sharpened and sharpened often. Yes, stropped, all of that, honed, whatever. And the Spartan Harsey just does not have a sharp range hoil. They don't give you a sharp range hoil. And yeah, I could Dremel in my own. Um, and they do have the stop pin up a little high. So I technically have an area to cut it out but that's just more extra work that i might not have to do with these so just on sharpen ability and being able to repeat sharpen i'm going to have to kick this one out and i absolutely love this knife you know it's really hard doing these you feel like you're if, i don't have any kids but i feel like if i did it's like i'm picking one of my children now next um I'm going to get a lot of hate for this one. I'm definitely going to get a lot of hate for this one. The Omnon's on. Now, let me finish, guys. Calm down. Calm down. Now, um, I don't own this knife. And I love this knife a lot. I do find this, the more and more, the longer I have it. And I haven't carried it. I haven't used it or anything. But I find the longer I have it, the more I do love it. But I do not own it, so I haven't gotten to use it and cut with it and really feel what it's like. But just based off of purely sharpening, I guess I've sharpened with it, so that's kind of like using it. Um, the thumb studs are a little tight to get to. Um, if I took that rubber band off, it might be different. I don't know. They're supposed to be silent, though, with that band. Somebody told me that, and this thing ain't silent. Anyways, but also this thing's a little sharp to unlock, especially compared to these. These are a little bit easier to use. Let me just say that than this. Now, if I wasn't in a speed contest of use, then this one would possibly win. And in all reality, like if you really threw it up in the air at me, I could possibly pick this one as the better one that I like. But just from a purely user aspect, this is going to be a little bit more difficult to use over these um now we get down to the last two um i love this knife so much i love both of these knives so much um man if this thing had better thumb studs i the, there wouldn't even be a competition right now based on usability this thing just works so much better in use. It cuts so much better. You have so much life in sharpening. Um, it's ridiculously smooth for its phosphor bronze. This one has a ceramic bearing, so of course it's very smooth. And I love its thumb stud action. If this thing didn't have a flipper tab too, um, like because I, I do really like the non-flipper right here. This one, um, the ergos just go up so high. I love the non-flipper version of the hinder. But I also like having the flipper one too. So, you know, because this one flips really good. I whew, um damn it. Just just on this is how I narrow it down because I, I can kind of cut corners here when I base off of straight, purely use. I'm going to have to pick the, man, oh, I love this knife so much. This is so hard. I'm going to have to pick the Sabenza, and the reason why, the reason why is because of its sharp, I'm, I know you can easily sharpen this over and over, obviously. But if you've ever cut 
with this and then this and then had I, I use my knives I, I really do I use my knives so every time I go down to okay if I if I'm gonna carry this and use this if I'm gonna carry and use this then I, I'm gonna have to keep sharpening it now the more I sharpen this the worse it's going to cut or the farther I'm gonna have to lay back the edge. Now it's not a problem laying back the edge, but I could do that with any knife, right? So it just doesn't perform as good as this knife does in practice. So I can sharpen this knife so for so long and it doesn't get thicker. It'll still cut just as good. And yeah, um, I guess I'm gonna have to pick even though, man, I, I really am not happy with the, the, the thumb studs, even though I do love how smooth it is. I'm trying to figure out where to get the the thumb studs so that, like, the other thumb studs. I know there are other thumb studs you can get. I don't know if it winds up being better or worse, but I feel like it will. So, we'll see. Um, I guess I'm going to have to pick the Sabenza. I love you guys. Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully, you watched all the way through. Peace out.